A lesson for March 27, 2016. Lesson 4. Unit 1. Test of Faith. Our lesson title is Holding Strong to Belief. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalms 23. Our background scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And our printed text is also from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, 1 through 8. And our lesson aim at studying this lesson is that that the student should be able to remember details of the discovery by Jesus' followers of his resurrection and the promise for the future. That they should feel the, the vacillating loss experienced by the women as well as the relief that comes from understanding how faith in God helps Christians survive their losses. And finally, that they should be able to tell one another stories of grief and encourage and strengthen one another with assurance of good things to come through Jesus Christ. Holding strong to beliefs. As we celebrate this Easter Sunday, 2016, we have before us a beautiful lesson and we have in our lesson where we see where that we are brought to the events after the Lord Jesus was crucified that his disciples they were hiding in fear thinking that all was lost and that they also were in danger but in the lesson we are told of the affection which these women had for our Lord and Savior. So let's read verses 1 and 2, which states, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might anoint the Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. So we see that when the Sabbath was passed, that is at sunset of our Saturday, that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Less, and Salome, the mother of Zebedee's sons, which were John and James, that they brought spices that they might come and anoint the Lord Jesus. That is, that they brought spices really to perfume his body so that he would be properly embalmed. We are told in John the 19th chapter, verse 39, that Nicodemus, he had bought a large quantity of dry spices and myrrh and aloes which served to dry the, the wounds and dry up the blood. But they, the women, brought ar aromatic spices to anoint him, that is, to embalm his body and to apply these spices, these spices to keep his body from uh, uh, rotting this completely away. This is proof from their actions and their intent that they felt that Jesus was dead forever. Though they had been with Jesus and had followed him from Galilee from his early ministry for over a couple of years, they had heard him many times, but they never really listened to the things that he had said. They had heard him, but they did not truly listen and understand. And so many times we we hear things, but are we truly listening? Are we just hearing the sounds, but, but are we going into the deeper meaning of what is being said to us? So we find in verses 4 and 3 where it states, 
And they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, has been rolled away. Who shall roll away the stone from the tomb? From the door of the tomb. This stone, this large stone, which was set there by Joseph of Arimathea, and that when they placed Jesus' body in his tomb, that they placed a big stone in front of it. Now, this was at this time, this was the only difficulties that the women were uh, aware of because they was there when they buried Jesus in the tomb, but then they left because the Sabbath was about to start. But they did not understand or they did not know that after that, that the chief priest that same evening had went to Pontius Pilate and that they had informed Pontius Pilate that Jesus had made the statement that after the third day that he would rise again from the dead. And so the priest asked Pontius Pilate to place a, a guard there in front of the tomb so that his disciples would not steal his body and claim that Jesus has risen. So Pontius Pilate put a a squad of soldiers there, then he also put a, a, a seal on the tomb, signifying the seal of Rome, that if anyone messed with this, that they would have to endure the wrath of the Roman Empire. But in the other Gospels, the Summer's Gospel says, Matthew, how that uh, angel appeared, and how that an angel appeared, and that the guards that was there, that that they were that they were frightened, that they passed out and, and, and as men that's, that, that has fallen dead and that out of fear they got up and fled and that the angels rolled away the stone. And so the women, unaware of this, they had set out to do what they heart felt love for Jesus called them to do, to see that he had a proper burial. Now, if they had known all this, in all likelihood, they would never have attempted to go there. See, because they would have known that the guards would not have left, let them in, and so there would have been su sufficient discouragement, you know, but all their concern was, was right now, or was how they was going to roll away that stone that laid at the door of the tomb. It tells us, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, has been rolled away, which was the first thing that amazed them. You know, we have to understand this and, and realize that, that those those that who are carried about with a a holy and, and, and a love and a zeal to seek Christ diligently and to do the will diligently that those who, who trust in God and not lean on their own understanding, but regardless of the situation that they we want to do the things that are pleasing to the Lord, many times we we'll find that difficulties that has laid in our ways strangely vanished. We see, we can testify, many can testify how the Lord made a way out of no way. And that how that it was it it was beyond our own strength and ability, how that God has helped us do things beyond our wildest dream. And so here God had prepared a way for them. They was wondering how they was going to do this. Though they were women and, and no men was with them and that with their, all their combined strength, they knew that they would not be able to roll away that stone. So 
when they looked up, they seen that God had already made a way. And so we need to learn how to trust in the Lord and not to lean to our own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all our ways and what the scriptures say that what he would direct our path. So they find that the that the stone was removed from the door of the tomb. And we find in verse five saying that as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alone. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man. It was an angel appeared in the likeness of a young man and that he was clothed with a long white garment. And they saw that the body of Jesus was not where he they had left it the other night. And they said, the scripture saying, seeing him, the young man, the angel sitting there, they were frightened. They were alone. But we find in verse 6 where the angel says unto them, don't be alone. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Be not alone. We find in Luke, the 15th chapter, verse 10, where Jesus says that I tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Just as angels rejoice in the repentance of sinners, they also they do also in the consolations of sinners, the confidence of sinners. He tells them, don't be alone. Fear not. You lovers of Jesus, fear not. And so instead of them being confounded and bewildered because the body is gone, here the angel tells them to be comforted. Be comforted. Why? Because ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, the one who was crucified three days earlier, this crucifixion, which was a shameful death and, and which was a sense of describing the shame that the, the, the shame that Jesus endured. For we find in Philippians, the second chapter, verses seven and eight, speaking of Jesus, where it says, but, but made him himself a no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The shame of that crucifixion. Jesus, who was crucified. Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of God. The angels say he is risen. His resurrection proved that what Jesus had said about himself, the claim that he made, that, that he was the son of God. Romans 1, 4 says that Jesus is declared that it is shouted out loud that he is declared to be the son of God, the God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. He was crucified in shame, but now his resurrection, he is glorified. Therefore, instead of those women being 
confounded and alarmed and fearful, it should be good news to them to hear that instead of anointing him because of death, they may rejoice in him because he is alive. This is the story that we need to comfort people with. We need to comfort people with not so much about the 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 material things, about the blessings, but this is this is what the gospel is, simply is that 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 Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried, and that he was raised the third day according to to the scripture. That is the good news. That word gospel means good news. What? That that he is risen. Why is he risen? Because he paid our debt in full. The good news is that Jesus came to die to pay a sin that we could not pay ourselves. That the best of us regardless of uh, uh, who we might think we are or the credentials or the pedigree or the wealth that we might have that that that's a debt that even the the best of us could not pay and so the good news is that God loved us so much that he sent his son to do for us what we could not do for ourselves and so after assuring them that the one that they seek Jesus of Nazareth that he is risen, the angels instruct them. He says, but verse 7, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he had told you. Jesus had, had told them time and time again that that he must die and be buried and raised and raised the third day, and that he would meet them in Galilee. Peter had confronted him when Jesus told him that, Surely, Lord, thou must not die. But Jesus told him, Satan, get behind me. It was necessary that he had that Jesus would do the will of the father but the lord also had told peter too that peter satan desires to sift you like wheat but he said i have prayed for you that your faith fail not so now the angel is telling these women to tell his disciples and peter that he is going before them Here, Peter is singled out for special notice. In this, we see, if we would look at this, we, we would see the kindness and the mercy and the forgiveness of the Lord. Though all his disciples, not just Peter, but all his disciples, except John, they had fled out of fear and forsaken him. Peter, just before the death of Jesus Christ, the one that stood so boldly and before everyone and claimed with his chest puffed out, out all out, Lord, if these rest of them will run off and leave you, Lord, I will never leave you. Lord, I will die for you. Peter, the one that followed Jesus, to his trial. As he stood out there in the court, he denied, courtyard, he denied Jesus three times. Jesus, he denied Jesus three times. That Peter, after bragging on his own might about his great love for the Lord, that he denied him three times. That's why it is important for us to be careful. For we find in the book of Ephesians, it says, be strong 
in the Lord and not in the in, in, in the power of his might. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to understand that we cannot wrestle with the devil. We cannot stand against the wiles and the schemes of the devil, of our own might and ingenuity. That's why it is necessary for us to be strong in the Lord. And that what we have to do what? Put on the whole armor of God. And so Peter trying to be with the with the best of intentions, but he failed. And so now we see that even after this, Jesus sent a special message that 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 to tell his disciples and Peter. See, but Jesus still loved. Peter, having loved him once, he loved him unto the end. That is one of the things that we have to understand about our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, that, that they have an unfailing love, regardless of how we might fall short. But but the Lord, he loves us with, with a love that it, it, it is even hard. For, for human beings to comprehend. John the 13th chapter in verse 1 states, When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of the, this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And so as proof, of his forgiveness and that he still loved Peter, he sent this special message, the assurance that though he had denied him, yet he has risen and was still his Lord. That goes for us too. When we fall short, when we sin, the Bible says that if, if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin breaks fellowship in, with a Christian. I'm speaking of Christian. It does not destroy relationship, but it breaks fellowship. And that, and that just as a loving father, it says that the Lord chastised those that he loved. So our Heavenly Father, when, when we fall into sin and refuse to confess our sin, then he chastises us, but he still loves us. See, that's why we have a Savior that who can save us to the uttermost. Why? Because he lived to make intercessions for the saints. Because whether we want to admit it or not, we all fall short. We all have done things and will do things that are displeasing to the Lord. Now, just as Peter stood there and denied the Lord three times with his mouth, many of us, many of us, we deny the Lord not by so much with the things that we say, but with the way that we live and by our actions. Verse 8, he tells them, after he tells the women to go and tell Peter and the disciples, verse 8 says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. I imagine, I can only imagine that this was a, 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 a amazing, a, a, a big shock. And that these women, that they were not, they're so fearful of seeing an angel, but but the circumstances that, that surrounded this event, that they had seen, they they was there at the cross. When, when when Jesus, when they seen him die, they was there when they seen the soldiers stick the, the spear 
in his side. They was there when they Joseph of Arimathea came and, and pleaded with Pontius Pilate for his body, and they went with him and Nicodemus as they wrapped Jesus in linen and put a hundred pounds of, uh, uh, of spices in that linen and then put him in that tomb and rolled that rock in front of the tomb. And so now here they come. The rock is removed. It's an angel sitting there and Jesus is gone. And so now he tells them to go and tell the disciples that your Lord is risen. So they left there trembling and, and, and they didn't say nothing to anyone because they were afraid. We today, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we today, as Christians, we are not to be afraid, but it is our responsibility to do what? To be a witness for Jesus Christ. For because the Lord had told us to what? That we will receive power. That is the Holy Ghost, and that we are to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that we are to be His witness to the uttermost parts of the earth. There is no need for us to be afraid. Though people laugh, though people criticize, and, and, and though people say, well, there are, you know, different uh, modes or different ways. No, we are to be a witness to Jesus Christ. For first Tim, second Timothy one seven said, for, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and song and sound mind. Be not therefore fearful of the testimony of our Lord that he is risen. That he is risen. We can rejoice. And, and we can rejoice in our faith. And we can hold on. Hold on strong to our belief. To our faith. And what is the basis of that? What we stand on is that is that Jesus who was delivered for our our offenses was raised again for our justification and he is alive in heaven today and that we have a high priest that we have an intercessor that that we have a savior who is there and he's there to help us in all our time of need why because he understand he was tempted in all points as, as we yet without sin. Therefore, he can make intercessions for us. Holding on to our faith. He was delivered for our offenses. And, and he was raised for our justification. May God bless you and keep you.